has kind of deteriorated as the day has gone on, so I apologize ahead of time, but um, there will be two benefits. One is that uh, you'll have to listen very carefully. The other is that I won't talk very long. <laughs> but uh, I want to speak to you this evening on the subject of why we use the King James Version. Now, the last time I, I spoke on this was 12 years ago, so I, I don't harp on it, but uh, I, I think it's important for, for you to, to hear and understand this. The, the first thing that you need to understand is we believe the Bible is inspired of God. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means it's God-breathed. One of the signs that a person is not breathing is they can't talk. If somebody's going, it's you know because they they're blocked somehow. <laughs> You've got to help them. Well, God can breathe. God can talk. God can communicate. Uh, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I found it interesting that in my Bible, I don't know why this is here, but. It says, the revised version says, every scripture inspired of God is also profitable. Yeah. Big difference, isn't there? Now, I think they show that just to show the, the contrast. Um, there's a big difference between all scripture is inspired of God and all scripture that is inspired is profitable. Uh, that's one of the reasons we use the King James Version. Uh, but we believe the Bible is inspired of God. In, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and, and verse 20, he says that, uh, get there first, <clears throat> knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Now that's not talking so much about how we understand it, but how it was given. He's saying it wasn't some individual thought, oh, people need to hear this, I better write this down. No, it says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We believe the Bible is God's word, a given of God. It's inspired of God. God breathed. Secondly, we believe that God preserves his word. To me, it just makes sense. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't spend a lot of time worrying about whether the Bible is God's word and why and all of that. Uh, believe it. But the God that made the universe... And the God that gave us the Bible can surely keep it for us to read. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been people who've tried to destroy it. Um, Isaiah wrote, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. There was a, a guy, I, I'm not sure of his name, uh, the king in Jeremiah chapter 36 I should have gotten his name. Um, they, they read him the book of Jeremiah. And boy, he didn't like it. And as they passed him the, I guess it would have been, I don't know what it was made of, but uh, the, the scrolls, he'd cut them up and throw them in the fire. He wasn't having it. So Jeremiah went home and wrote it again. Amen. And the Bible says, and a bit more. <laughs> God had a bit more to say. The second time. Uh, kind of, I probably shouldn't even say that. It kind of reminded me, what, we watched the, uh, uh, President Trump's State of the Union address. And uh, the lady behind him was tearing it up. While he was, <laughs> I thought, oh, well. Uh, you know, that's, that's what people like to do to God's word. They say, well, I'll just, I'll just throw that away. Well, listen, God's not dependent on a piece of paper for his word to, to be there. Uh, God's word is preserved because God does it. Some, the main way people try to change the Bible is they try to change it. And, and very devious. One of the very first things Satan did is, hath God said? Just trying to cast doubts. And you know, he, he's been pretty successful with a lot of people. A lot of people think the Bible has been translated from one language to another, to another, to another. No. Every time they try, if it's in, I, I was thinking of my brother-in-law. He's a missionary in, in Mexico. He says they use a Bible that's older than the King James. It's the, I call it the chili relleno. It's, it's something else that got relleno or something in there, some, some king. And uh, it, it was translated before the King James was into, into Spanish. They go back to the Greek. 
they go back to the Hebrew. Now, they don't translate it from English or Japanese or you know, something like that. They all go back to, the, to the, the oldest manuscripts they can find, the most accurate, and so on. Uh, there, there's always been people who've tried to, to change or to destroy the Word of God. Uh, but God has always had a witness. You know, he has a general witness in the fact the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. I've talked to people who said, you know, we, we were studying astronomy and I thought there, there's got to be more to this than I, I know. We had a guy get saved many years ago. He, he just believed there had to be a God. And when we presented scripture to him, he said, that's the God. <laughs> it made sense to him. You know, nature speaks in a very general way, but you know, God has been very specific. Uh, God has given special revelation. There's been time when God's voice has spoken from heaven. Now, be careful if you think you're, you're hearing that, but uh, there's been times when God's voice has spoken from heaven. God has spoken through the prophets. God, the Bible says in Hebrews, in these last days has spoken through his son. But he especially has recorded in his word, the Bible. 1 Peter 1.25, the word of the Lord endureth forever. The fact that we have the truth is called revelation. God has revealed the truth. You know, the reason we know about God is not because we've figured it out. God told us. God revealed it to us. You wouldn't know about God if he hadn't revealed himself. And then God had it written down. We call that inspiration. God, God, God collected it in a book. And God keeps and preserves his words. Uh, like, like we read in, in Matthew, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. See, the Bible is not man's words about God. The Bible is God's word to man. It is important to make that distinction. Now, I'm not going to talk a long time tonight, but I just wanted to give you a couple of things. <clears throat> and really, I, I'm not the guy you want to talk to when you want to talk about the King James. Uh, I just preach the Bible. I don't preach, uh, I don't present a version, but uh, the reason we use the King James Version is mainly two reasons. Number one is the text. Uh, the King James is translated from a specific text. It's usually called, the, the fancy word is the textus receptus, the received text, the standard text. It was what was generally accepted until the late 1800s, about 1870. Uh, Bibles of all languages agreed that they came from that same text. Um, in about that time, there came out some new manuscripts. They, I shouldn't say new manuscripts. People said these are older than what we've been using. Now, they had different, different names. Uh, one of them was called the Sinaiticus. Um, it was because it was discovered in a convent near Mount Sinai. Uh, one was called the Alexandrian because it came from Egypt. One was called the Vaticanus. The Vatican had had it for many years and never told anybody about it. Uh, they'd had it for like 500 years or something. And uh, these texts came out, and a couple of guys named Westcott and Hort said, oh, these are older than what we've been using. Uh, these must be more accurate. But as, as they began to look at it, they found out that these few texts didn't even agree with each other. And uh, the, uh, the text makes a, a big difference. And, you know, it just makes sense to me. God didn't leave himself without a witness for 1,800 years, then all of a sudden, oh, now we got the right one. <laughs> uh, we, we have the word of God. God has preserved his word. Uh, there's over 3,000 manuscripts that, that are involved with the, the Textus Receptus. There's only a couple that are involved with the, the modern translations uh, that uh, people use for things like the NIV and, and so on. Now, I brought a copy of the NIV with me tonight. If you saw that up there, you might have thought, oh, pastor's going liberal. Uh, but uh, one of the things that it makes it hard with the NIV is they have so many footnotes, and it'll be commenting constantly about early manuscripts or some manuscripts and, and so on. You know, all it does is cause doubts in people's minds. It doesn't help them to think more clearly. Uh, listen, it's the Word of God, and uh, we have a consistency of, of witness in the received text, the, the standard text. Uh, there's agreement, usually even in spelling. Uh, it, with, uh, with those few texts, there's great variations. Um, let me read a couple of comments here from uh, a person who knows more about it than I do. Um, he, he talks about the different, different ones that, that I've mentioned. And then uh, 
let me just find this. I was going to try and copy this book off for you, but I couldn't get our copier to, to cooperate with me. He said the Vaticanus, the Sinaiticus, and, and several others, uh, he's, he, this commentator, considered the depositories of the largest amount of fabricated readings, ancient blunders, and intentional perversions of truth, which are discoverable in any known copies of the Word of God. Like many scholars before him, he became convinced that these manuscripts survived only because they were full of mistakes and little used. One of them, the, the report is that it was found in a rubbish bin, ready to be burned. Uh, they survived because they didn't use them. They said, oh, there's a problem with this. We'll set that aside. Uh, I've started using a new Bible. That's hard, uh, getting a new Bible. But when you use the Bible, it wears out. You, you, you probably noticed that. Uh, if it lasts you 10 years, if you really use the Bible, you'll struggle to make it last 10 years. Um, I've still got all my old Bibles, but uh, you know, they just get to a place where, you know, you, you can't hardly read them because they're torn and, and, and so on. But uh, the text makes a big difference. Uh, the uh, consistency of witness with the received text and, and so on, uh, the... Uh, the variety of the, of the evidence. Uh, let me read you one, one other thing. With many of the new texts, it says one of the stock arguments uh, that the text of the, uh, I'm sorry, one of the stock arguments of the Jehovah's Witness in defense of their blasphemy is that the text of the authorized version is unreliable. And that the true text of the New Testament is to be found in the modern versions which deny the eternal deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, some of these new versions have, some have purposely warped the scriptures, but others have just in little ways uh, changed things that, that make it hard to understand what, what God was saying. And because there's so many um, manuscripts, it's not hard for a person to look and see, oh, well, they've changed that. Yeah. It'd be like if somebody changed the stop sign You'd notice, you know, there's plenty of them around, S-T-O-P, that's the way it's spelled. And it's the same with God's word. God promised to preserve his word. It didn't disappear to be reconstructed after 1,800 years. Uh, you can weigh out uh, the evidence. Uh, let me read this again. He said, I'm utterly disinclined to believe, so grossly improbable does it seem, that at the end of 1,800 years, 995 copies out of every 1,000 will prove untrustworthy. And that the one, two, three, or four which remain, whose contents till yesterday as good as unknown, will be found to have retained the secret of what the Holy Spirit originally inspired. I'm utterly unable to believe, in short, that God's promise has so entirely failed that at the end of 1,800 years, much of the text of the gospel had in point of fact to be picked up by a German critic out of a waste paper basket in a convent of St. Catherine, and that the entire text had to be remodeled after the pattern set by a couple of copies which had remained in neglect during 15 centuries and had probably owed their sur survival to that neglect, while hundreds of others had been thumbed to pieces and had bequeathed their witness to copies made from them. Folks, the, the, the key is this. We believe that God preserves his word. And people of, uh, of goodwill and, and common sense can, can easily see that. The second reason we use the King James is because of the, the way of translation. You may, these things may, may not mean anything to you, but uh, uh, for some people this, this will be important. Uh, the qualifications of the translators. Yeah, to me, that makes a difference. Whether that person's a Christian or believes that the Bible can be inspired of God. Uh, the, their beliefs make a difference, but especially the philosophy of translation. Now, to me, uh, we, I, I believe the job of a translator is to translate what the Bible says. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? But the new philosophy of modern translation is what they call dynamic equivalence. It, it sounds like, like it makes sense. They translate what they think it means. They translate what they think it means. Now, let, let me just, have you ever been at home and had your wife or your husband say something to you and you translated what they thought they meant instead of what they said? We've all done it. 
But my wife said something to somebody the other day, and they were so offended, they've, they've stopped their kids coming to church. And they quoted to me what she said, and it had nothing to do with what she said. She had, she had made just a, a brief comment to them, and they had taken it to mean, and it didn't mean that at all. And to try to translate the Bible by what we think it means is, is a big mistake, a dynamic equivalence. The, they say the man who originated this idea was a man named Eugene Nida, and he didn't believe in the inspiration of Scripture. Uh, he decided we should just, we should just translate what we, what we think it is. Um, there, there's a lot of verses like this. I mentioned the one there in, uh, in 2 Timothy. Uh, another one is uh, Luke 2.14, where you, you, we hear it at Christmas. A glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. And that's what the Bible says. The new translation is glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of goodwill. And you say, what's the difference? Well, the difference is who's bringing the peace? Is God bringing the peace or is man bringing the peace? Big difference. Just a little bit of a word change. And, you know, fortunately, we can look and say, hey, that's not right. We don't have to just accept somebody's word for it. Uh, God has written it down and, and preserved that. Uh, some people not only use this dynamic equivalence, but some people actually have a theological bias. Now, the most uh, maybe blatant would be the, the uh, Jehovah's Witness translation. You've probably heard of the, the New World Translation. They take out the deity of Christ and, and, and different things. Uh, but some translators have purposely taken out, for instance, the blood of Christ or the miracles and and different things. Well, we can see that. Uh, we don't have to be fooled by that. We can look at, at our Bibles and, and see. Um, some of these are, are, are very uh, devious, you know, changing things about morality and, and so on. But, you know, it does make a difference what Bible you use. Now, having said that, be careful that you're not just a bully. The first thing we want to present to people is not the King James. It's the Bible. It's Jesus. And I have a little pamphlet here. We have copies of it. The Catholic Bible has the answer. If you're witnessing to a Catholic, you can take their Bible and you can show them from their Bible that what they believe, what the Catholic Church believes, is not what their Bible teaches. And he goes through nine or ten different things. Uh, did Jesus say he would build his church on Peter? You can show them from their Bible. No. Which is authority? Which has the authority, the tradition of men or the Word of God? You can show them from their Bible, it's the Word of God. Can Mary, the priest, or saints be our mediators? You can show them from their Bible. You know, so what I'm saying is, um, don't make this your primary argument in life. And we use the King James, and we'll continue to use the King James. Uh, we're not going to change from that. But... I know people who are very dogmatic about the King James who don't actually practice it, who don't actually believe it. They just like to argue about using the King James. Be careful. Uh, don't, let that, uh, don't let that get you away from the words. God's words. Uh, he wants us to, to believe him and have faith in, in his word. And, and I believe we can. It's inspired of God. It's preserved of God. We don't have to do it. God said it, it'll last through eternity. And our faith is, is in him and in his word. And I want to encourage you tonight. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things in life that'll change. Someone gave the example. Uh, he was at a, a blacksmith. And he had a whole big pile of hammers. You know, things they'd worn out. But he just had one anvil. That anvil, man, it, it stood up. He said the anvil's like the word of God. It, it stands the test of time. The hammers are like people who are opposing the word of God. They fall by the wayside. They wear out. Everything else will change, but God's word stays the same. As someone has said, wages keep changing, but the wages of sin are still the same. <laughs> the wages of sin is still death, and the gift of God is still eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, let me encourage you tonight. We have, a, we have God's holy word, and uh, we can count on it. We can believe it. Uh, it's like Mark Twain said, it's, he says, not the parts I don't understand that bother me. <laughs> there's, there's plenty in there we can understand and, and God can use in our hearts and in the lives of people. And as time goes on, God will help you to understand it more and more and to be more like Jesus as, as you read it and believe it 
and obey it. Like we talked about this morning, King Asa, and he brought revival because he brought back the word of God. And uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's your need in your heart tonight. Uh, you have a general belief in God. Listen, it needs to be specific. You need to actually open it up. I tell people, it's kind of like paint. You know, if you can have a tin of paint, but it doesn't do any good until you open it up and splash it around. That's the way the Word of God is. Open it up. Let it change you. Let it make a difference in your heart and life. Uh, God is so good to us. He's given us His Holy Word. And uh, we can know the truth, and He says the truth will make us free. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for those who went before. And uh, Lord, the testimony that we have of all the way from creation to, to the end of time. And uh, Lord, we're thankful that uh, you sent the living word, Jesus Christ, and that uh, you've spoken unto us by your Son, that we can know the truth. Thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, help us to be committed to living your word and sharing it with others. Uh, Lord, you said that we're born again by the word of God, and we pray that we'll share your word so that it can uh, cut like a knife and uh, bring relief to, the, to those that hear it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for your...